Thank you, Mary. The passion with which Mary spoke then really shows, shows the commitment and real involvement of both spheres of government in Scotland to this work. So thank you, Mary, for that wonderful speech there. I've also had my Twitter feed buzzing like anything this morning with, with news about this event, with conversations about this event, and that has been really pleasing to see. And that walk here from Haymarket this morning did remind me of the walk the other way to Murrayfield when there's a big match on and all the, all the excitement as people are walking along there. So it, it was great to be part of that as well. My name's Councillor Alison Everson. I'm president of COSLA and I'm also chair of the board of the Improvement Service. COSLA is the national voice for local government in Scotland, and obviously early learning and childcare is a key priority for us and our work. I'm also a mum who's had four children, and my four children between them experienced school nursery, they experienced private providers, they experienced childminders, and they gained so much from that, that combination of experience. And to be honest, the family gained an awful lot too. Um, and I also served as, as uh, the chair of the local play group for three years, so, so got to know that, that some of the work involved in running such organisations as well. So um, I'm really grateful for all the work that you're doing. And I thank you for making the time in your busy schedules to come along today, to take time away from the important work that you're doing with young people and children in, in the local areas. It's good to be able to discuss where we are with less than a year to go and what more we need to do to deliver the early learning and childcare expansion by August next year. Today's summit is an important opportunity for all early learning and childcare providers, whether they are childminders or from the private, third or public sector, to take time to discuss what we have in common, our common challenges and how we can work together collectively to ensure the best outcome for Scotland's children and families. And that collaboration, that partnership is so important for the work we're all doing here. So it's good to see you all, as I said. The agenda will allow us to get down to the detail on how we deliver our high quality early learning and childcare in partnership. But it's worthwhile also remembering why we are making this investment in expanding the funding hours of early learning and childcare. The additional hours of funded ELC and the increased accessibility and flexibility will open real new opportunities for parents and carers to work, study, train and volunteer. And the emphasis on fair work that's been mentioned for, for the providers is also obviously important for those parents and carers as well. To provide new and expanded resources within our communities to support families. And most importantly, of course, to improve the outcomes for children. Research from Scotland, the UK and from right across the world demonstrates that the type of high quality early learning and childcare that we are building together will improve how children learn and achieve, not only as they first enter school, but will have huge benefits to them throughout their school years and beyond into the world of employment and further study. And of course, for when they become parents themselves in the future as well. This effect is even greater for children in our most deprived communities. This is a really important investment in Scotland's future. And this work that we are doing together will have an impact for years to come. So, with less than 12 months to go until all the children start accessing their entitlement, where are we in our journey towards 1140? If you look past some of the recent headlines, the big picture is broadly positive. There are already almost 220,000 children benefiting from increased hours of funding ELC. And we are hearing really positive feedback on the ground from parents receiving the increased entitlement. Now, that is not to say, of course, and we all know this, that it's all smooth sailing between now and August next year. Growing the number of people working in the ELC sector sustainably is a key challenge for all of us. And I know there are a number of innovative projects across the country to attract the qualified, diverse and enthusiastic workforce we need whether that is being creative with redeployment, new approaches to training, or attracting returners. Importantly, we need to make sure that we don't get stuck thinking about one local authority workforce and one workforce of the private and third sector providers, but instead we all need to share that understanding that there is one ELC workforce. A workforce that should have a sense of identity, 
that is highly skilled and feels valued as indeed you are, as this workforce is the most important factor in children receiving the best experiences possible. Now, as part of this process, and has already been referred to, COSLA's My Job Scotland recruitment portal now offers free advertising for the entire ELC workforce, and registration is really quick and easy using your own care inspectorate details. And through this, you can create your own section of the site and publish your own jobs. Now, this work has been mentioned, has been done in partnership with the Scottish Government, who provided the funding for this process. There's a stand outside, a My Job Scotland stand outside, and if you want any further detail about this, please, when you're visiting the other stands, the Scottish Government stand and all the stands out there that are offering so much information, please also remember to, uh, to visit that stand for further details as well. And it's an important point to emphasise that this has been done in partnership with the Scottish Government and local government and Scottish Government really are working together to, to, to deliver this, this whole project. We're also seeing greater support for funded providers. The rates for delivering 600 hours of funding ELC have increased by more than 25% in the past two years. And rates are even higher where funded providers are involved in expansion phasing. Moreover, there is a wider offer of support for funded providers from local authorities, including, but by no means limited to, training, development, business support and direct grants. I think this reflects what we already know that meeting our commitment to Scotland's families will require all of us to work together. It's fair to say that this process has seen the relationship between local authorities and funded providers being tested in some areas, but I think we've seen it grow, and I'm hopeful that through sharing best practice across the country that we can continue to improve. Last year, COSLA worked with the NDNA to agree a set of principles to drive partnership working. These reflected the key building blocks of good working relationships and included being clear about expectations from everyone involved, ensuring regular communication, being transparent about decision-making, creating mechanisms to share good practice, and ensuring a recognition of need and mutual respect for all these parties. Since these principles were agreed at the Young Children and Young People's Board at COSLA in September 2018, we've had positive feedback on how they have been used locally to complement the existing productive relationships and drive improved partnership working. I must say from my own experiences as a local councillor, I remain a local councillor as well, and my own experience of being receiving lots of letters from, from partner providers about the situation that they were going through, it now seems to be clear from the letters I'm now getting that the partnership working is bearing fruit. I've been pleased to see as well that the West Partnership have created a regional forum to discuss partnership working. While still relatively new, the forum is chaired by a funded provider and is an opportunity for providers and member local authorities to develop a common understanding share best practice and collaborate in practices relating to the 1140 hours. I know that other areas across Scotland are interested as well in this model. In Inverclyde, early phase blended placements where children use their entitlement both within setting and also with childminders are being expanded. Importantly, this is now moving beyond just the details of how these placements work in practice and is now working together to develop a shared, high-quality curriculum and joint approach to assessment. The principles also drive our engagement with funded providers at a national level. Over the past year, COSLA has had regular contact with a diverse range of representative groups for the sector and our door is always open for a conversation about where we go next. COSLA have also worked with the Scottish Government to support the Partnership Forum that's already been mentioned this morning. Since its first meeting last October, the Partnership Forum has grown and found its feet. Each session has been hugely valuable. The session in Aberdeen on workforce identified a number of ways that we could work together to share resources around training and development. In Lockerbie, there was a valuable opportunity for local authorities to provide some insight on how they had developed their plans for the expanded hours. 
And when the forum met in Stirling, there was a productive discussion on how to give parents a very clear message on what they can expect when the 1140 goes live, and as importantly, what they cannot. My colleague, Councillor Stephen McCabe, the spokesperson for Education um, and Children's Services, attended the partnership forum when it met in Glasgow in April. He has commented that it was such a useful experience to hear directly from funded providers about their experience so far and the sh shared commitment to working together to overcome the challenges. I think this is one example of the forum providing momentum to cement strong relationships at a local level and delivering the best outcomes for children and their families. So in closing, I'm sure that everyone will make the most of today's opportunity to discuss openly and honestly about where we next use our time to, to, to move forward and, and work together in partnership, to understand all perspectives, and most importantly, to come away with concrete actions for change between now and next August. So thank you for coming today, and I hope you really enjoy the experience together today as well. Thank you.